Here I want to talk about how you develop a balanced scorecard. I have helped hundreds if not thousands of organizations across the world in many different sectors develop balanced scorecards and what I want to do in this video is share with you how you approach this in practice. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the balanced scorecard which basically defines your strategic focus and the things you need to do in your organization to deliver, deliver your strategic goals and the metrics to help you to monitor, you want to engage everyone in the organization. I have seen this so many times where companies come to me and say, can you review my balanced scorecard? We've had one of the big consulting companies in to develop this for us. And then you think, okay, what was the level of engagement? Where has this come from? And I feel if the balanced scorecard is developed by some external company and then given to you without the real engagement of everyone in the organization, it is very difficult to implement this because you haven't got the ownership of it. So for me, it's really important that you gain insights. My experience is that everything you need to know about your strategic goals already exists within your organization. So what I do when I help organizations do this in practice is I would interview the key people in the organization. So usually between 10 and 20 key decision makers where we then explore what are the strategic challenges for the organization? What should be the strategic focus? How will you make money in the future? What markets do you want to get into? So you look at the different perspectives of the balanced scorecard. And if you don't know what the perspectives are, head to my YouTube channel or my website where you can find the templates for this. But this is about the process of how you develop it. So you basically talk about the different layers of your balanced scorecard. And you say, okay, what do you think? What's your view on this? I, as an independent facilitator, I come into this process completely neutrally. I, I'm, I will just listen to everyone and I make sure that the entire organization is represented. So you would speak to finance, you would speak to the CEO, you speak to marketing, you speak to IT, to HR and so on. So all the different business, um, all the different parts of the organization are represented. And obviously when you speak to finance, you get a more financial focus. If you speak to marketing, you get a more customer focus. But hopefully overall, they should all align. Doing this means that everyone feels that they have equally contributed to this process. So the buy-in usually is much better. A second benefit from this is that you make sure that there's alignment across the organization. So I can very quickly identify that maybe there are two or three different strategic areas that people think are more important, less important, and they're not really aligned. I remember getting a phone call from a CEO of a very well-known company who said, okay, can you come in and help us develop our balanced scorecard? And what we basically do is we, we just need a number of meetings. We are all on the same page and we just thresh out our, our strategy map and can you help us? I then convinced him that it would be a much more time efficient and better process if I interviewed everyone individually first and then I can bring this all together and then we have a much better starting page, which, a starting place where we can then discuss from. And people come in feeling that they have equally contributed to this process as well. Doing this was very interesting because what I found is that there were three different, very different strategies that, were, um, that people thought they were focusing on. And the CEO felt that they were completely aligned. So it brought this to the surface that there wasn't actually any alignment. So I came back with three different versions of this strategy map and then we discussed which one do you actually want to implement. So this was a really powerful session again. And so we then do, we engage everyone in this process. Sometimes I get asked, hey, shouldn't we in involve more people? So I did this with DHL, for example, and there they say, okay, we want to do a big customer survey. We want to do survey all our employees to input into this, to really understand our business challenges. And what I found interesting and learned from this experience is that actually after I interviewed the 20 top key decision makers in the organization, there was really nothing else that came out of the process that we could add to this. So I now trust this process really well. When I do this with government and public sector organizations, we would usually involve some external stakeholders in this initial discussion as well. So I've recently developed um, balanced scorecards for police forces and and government bodies. And then we would look at, okay, who are the key government agencies 
who are their key partners and we take their input as well, which can be very powerful. And again, helps, helps you to engage with your stakeholders and makes, you, makes the strategy process more inclusive. Once you've done this, you then usually, I would then facilitate a session where we then say, okay, this is my draft strategy map. This came out of all of the discussions I've had in, in terms of your strategic priorities. Now let's as a group discuss it and fine tune it. And this is where you get the group buy-in, where everyone already feels that they have contributed to this. But as a group, you then sit together and refine this. And then you get a strategy that is owned by the entire organization. Then you would take this and communicate the draft version. So when I recently designed uh, the strategy map for Tarmac, for example, we then had a big town hall launch of it. So the CEO and myself and some others stood up and presented the draft version, but then basically had 200 people in the organization, so the next layer of management, who could then sit down and say, look at this and say, okay, what do you think? Does this make sense to you? Which bits would you change? And we had really powerful discussions. So again, then you get the next layer of the organization really involved and you get an even better version of it. You're not only helping to communicate the focus, but you help everyone refine the strategic goals. And then once you have done this, you then define your action plan. So you define, and again, what I normally do is I would then go to the next level of the organization. We would define owners or owners or owning departments for each of the goals. And they would then come up with an action plan and present this back to the leadership team. And then you, in parallel, you would design KPIs where you again involve some of the uh, functions in the organization. So when you talk about HR, you go to HR say, what do we already track? What are the goals? Are there any gaps? And then you develop some new KPIs for this. This is all something you can do yourself as well. What I have found is that organizations sometimes don't like or it doesn't work as well when they do this by themselves because the person who facilitates this is sometimes seen as the driving force that might have a stake in all of this. So if the chief strategy officer, for example, takes charge of this and does all the interviews themselves, this sometimes gives you a bias and people might not have the same level of buy-in. Whereas when I talk to people, I sometimes feel that they see my sessions as a little therapy session where they can be really honest, where they can talk about what is going well, what isn't going so well. All of these are completely confidential and the only outcome will be the final strategy map with also identifying where alignment is really strong and where it isn't really strong. So hopefully this gives you a really good flavor of how you develop a balanced scorecard. I have a website and a YouTube channel where you can find lots of really valuable information. I have articles and case studies of how organizations do this in practice and lots of templates of how you develop a strategy map and KPI. Um, a, a really good KPI template and many others. So check those out. <music>